Hey, cool. All right, so let's get going. So, Debbie Weller, how are you? Good to see you. All right, unmute and say hello to everybody. Good morning. I just came back from watching the sunrise at the beach. All right, good for you. Good for you. Fantastic. Look at that couple, folks. Look at them. Look at that. Look at them. I mean, they're like twins, aren't they? All right. So anyway, Olivia, good to see you. Give us that Olivia smile, that unique Olivia smile. Um, we when Olivia was working on branding herself, you know, we almost came up with uh, Smiley Re. Um, you know, Olivia, you know, never customer ever ever in her life that doesn't, you know, with her real estate transactions are not smiling at the end, you know. But uh, anyway, we we would change that up to uh, all business Re, right? All business Re. Okay, so let me do this. I'm going to change uh, my view here, gallery speaker. There you go. I want to get the gallery. Up. Good. So, uh, so what's going on? What's going on in the marketplace? Uh, anybody have anything good to report? Anything? Anybody have anything bad to report? <laughs> um, you know, this call, by the way. Um, so far, I don't see any guests, but it is definitely what we call broker agnostic. Uh, we have people that join us from all type of all companies. Uh, it started as an EXP Realty Mastermind, but people from all companies join us. Um, and so if you're a guest for the first time, go ahead and speak up. Uh, and I don't know if you see Joe's um, uh, icon. Joe is uh, the assistant for George Philbeck, but I like George's. Uh, Joe, I like that. Um, uh, what you did on that for George, time on task over time. That That's his favorite quote, time on task over time. And that has always been the, 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 the key here. So um, how many of you, uh, you know, I, I, for those of you who show up all the time, but if you're, if you're new to the call first time or a guest, um, how many of you, tell me what you're looking for this morning. Why did you show up? Why did you show up? What are you looking for? Put it in the chat. I I'd showed, up, have you. I showed right. up to see you, George. I mean, uh, <laughs> I showed up to see you, Fred. Uh, well, you're very inspiring. Uh, once I get off these calls, I'm, I'm ready to rock and roll. I wish we had a call every day. I try well, to find well, calls every day. So I go from different calls to calls to well, get well, inspired. I don't know why I need to be inspired. I should be inspiring myself. But you, you do what you do. Well, yeah, today, Ted, I think you're going to really get a lot out of it. It's going to be very meaty as far as some real to do, not only to do, but to be um, that you're going to be able to put your arms around it. I, I mean, I got something this week that I just I, I am really just uh, between the artificial intelligence education this week, the soul intelligence education at. You know, somehow, you know, my cage gets rattled about two o'clock in the morning, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. I asked God, I said, why can't you do that? At like two o'clock in the afternoon. Um, but, but he says, I, you know, I'm too busy with all the other stuff. So but anyway, yeah, it's going to be some good stuff this morning. So I'm glad you showed up. Anybody else? What are you here for? Uh, I saw a chat one second. I'm here. I'm here for another nugget that I can add to my arsenal. I like that. At April, I like that. Add to your arsenal to grow myself in business. You know, I, I always say add bullets to your belt, right? Add bullets to your belt. Uh, Olivia says collaboration mastermind. You know, we keep talking about the power of the mastermind is so important and having minds join together because that's where, and that's why we need your participation in the community, in the community, and that I ask for videos of good, bad, ugly, beautiful, any video, because I meet with people all the time individually and I hear everything, but then publicly, no one wants to talk about it because it's just the way we've been trained, right? And so today, I hope that's going to change. So let me just get into this. Uh, by the way, I want to share a, one of my favorite videos. Um, because as we get into this thing about defeating mediocrity in the month of March, that's what we're talking about today. Um, and so I want to just play my, one of my favorite videos. Now, in one way, you could read this video as being negative, um, but it's really not. It's a um, uh, it, it's real. And I think some of you will relate to them. It's it, this. All, it says an hour. I'm not playing for this hour. I'm going to play the first few minutes of it. It says uh, here, this one, this is the one. I 
I walk alone. I'm at peace when I'm on my own. It can be hard, it can be tough. Chasing greatness can be a lonely road. Sometimes I look back and think, look how far I've grown. Sometimes I look back and think, look how far I've flown. Those who fly alone have the strongest wings. I've got a few scars, and if I had to do it again, I wouldn't change a thing. All the tough times, all the cold nights, I learned to fight alone. It made me strong alone. You aren't weak if you cry. After the tears dry, they evaporate, then you begin to rise. I don't need the attention or the recognition, and I still thrive. I made a choice to live my life for my terms. I can't keep the real me locked inside. So I walk alone. Some people go, well, wait a minute, isn't that kind of negative? I walk alone. Well, it's not because really every single one of us walk alone from the standpoint of no one's coming to rescue us. Nobody, not even your lover, not even your spouse, not your mother, not your father, not your brother, not your sister, not Fred, not EXP Realty, not XYZ Realty. Nobody's coming to rescue. We all are working alone. And so how do we defeat mediocrity? So in March, that's the emphasis, is defeating mediocrity. Now, mediocrity is a is an interesting word. You know, and I just, you know, last week we talked about word studies. Look at this, the use over time. A lot of times you see the opposite of words, but now this has gotten higher, <laughs> you know, the, 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 as much as it's used. But, you know, what is mediocrity of only moderate quality, not very good, but there's some better ones than that. A person that is not very good at something or not very good at anything in particular or something that is not very good. These people are just mediocrities. Um, you know, and then you have other ones like this, the, the now mediocre means the quality of being average or ordinary. So I like the one that you're just ordinary because I'm gonna show you in March how you're gonna become extraordinary. Um, you know, and it just says you can't be great at everything. In some areas, we all fall into mediocrity, which, amen, is the truth. Mediocre people want to do the very minimum. They won't and can't exert themselves to go to the extra mile. Now, I'll, I would change that a little bit. M mediocre people don't know they don't have to be stuck with the minimum. And that's the power of personal development. You're not stuck with you. Mediocre, mediocre people want to do the very minimum. They don't, they won't and can't exert themselves to go to extra mile. They are comfortable with getting low grades, whether it's about how they manage their health, eating habits, money, relationship, and personal development. It goes on and on and on. I just love word studies, right? But one of the things I guarantee you, if you show up in the next four masterminds, this is leap year, folks. This is leap year. So what I want to do is help you defeat mediocrity with M&Ms. It's that simple. I want you to go buy some M&Ms and you're just going to eat M&Ms all month in the month of March. Okay. And you're going to see what the M&Ms are. And, and then you're going to have to sink 
soul intelligence, artificial intelligence, and divine intelligence. Is Vivian on the call? Uh, Vivian, uh, uh, are you on the call? The other arrow? Okay, she ain't. She I'm here. Make sure. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh no, Vivian uh, Diodero, are you are you here? Oh no. Oh okay. Vivian is uh, someone who's been an agent of mine since 2008. Really, an interesting story. I took her on a consulting project with a builder developer to get them out of a heck of a mess they were in with some new townhouses they had built, and they were looking to place blame. And Vivian was a salesperson there, and they said, "Let's get rid of her. Let's do this. Let's do that." I said, "Whoa, whoa, let me just do a strategy on it, and we're going to figure it out." So anyway. I said, you, you need to keep her. She's your great asset. Well, she's still with them. And well, over the years, we've done four or 500 deals together it, it, because I got her to stay that, in that position. Just win, 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 win. And because of that, all the other deals that have happened, now there's other things that are just happening. So since 2008, so she says to me the other day, because we have not been connected at all. She is with the same brokerage I'm with. Uh, and and she's had her license all this time, but she hasn't been involved at all because she's been working for this builder developer, uh, just working for them directly. So finally, she's now back because they're all sold out. Long story. So we finally get together. She now wants to get rocking and rolling. So we finally sit down. And she looked at me. She says, you know what, Fred? I got to tell you something. You have really changed since 2008. I said, what? What do you mean? The way she looked at me like sternly, you really changed. She says, you've really gone Zen. <laughs> and I said, because she, we haven't really connected or talked about it all, but she sees all my Facebook stuff and the, the society and da, da, da. And she doesn't, hasn't had time to participate. But she says, you've really gone Zen. I said, well, not really. <laughs> so what is this idea of soul intelligence? You know, so let, let's, let's just talk about that for a second. If someone said to you, hey, what's this meeting you went to soul intelligence? How would you define soul intelligence? But put it in the chat or just unmute yourself and say, here's how I define soul intelligence. For those of you who've been hanging out with me for a while, how, how would you define soul intelligence? Someone said, what's soul intelligence? How would you define it? Anybody? Speak up. Let me see. No one's answering. Fred? See? Yes. Hey, uh, so soul intelligence to me right now is if if – the world being full of mediocrity and how can I become the best version of me is I have to, for me to be the best version of myself, that will, once I am being and practicing the best version of myself, then I can help and uplift, uplift other people will just come naturally. Okay. So working on myself to become the best version of me. Okay, good. Working on myself to be the best version of me. And, and one of the things, you know, on the left side of the chart, Aaron, that you and Debbie are familiar with, and, and most of the people on the call, a lot of people, you know, the work, but it's really an inside-out job, right? We, we, we become mediocre from the inside out. And it, because of our programming from the outside in, right? So soul intelligence is nothing but an inside-out job is what it is. And to realize that if it's going to be, it's up to me. So it's, And that's why I started with that video uh alone and you need to really you know fearless motivation on youtube put i walk alone i play that so much because i realize no one's come to save me right and and i don't need saving i i'm everything i need to be but it's all on the inside but i i only i can touch that right so soul intelligence is an inside out job then there's artificial intelligence which i'm going to talk about and artificial intelligence just didn't just happen yesterday last week five five weeks ago or five years ago. Artificial intelligence has been here. That's what all the intelligence on earth is, is artificial intelligence, because it's not eternal. It's not, it's, it's just, it's our intelligence, right? And, and, but the way they now put it together, oh my gosh, if I had artificial intelligence, I would be ruling the world. <laughs> um, you know, I just took uh, two days of training, two hours each. And I have another one today. And um, and this person, I think, is going to be partner with us. I'm going to handle the soul intelligence. And I mean, they're, they're world renowned. They're world renowned. And you're going to be hearing about, a lot about it. But art, so soul intelligence, artificial intelligence, and divine intelligence. Now, I'm going to show you something. And I hope I don't offend anyone. If you are if you have some religious background, or you'll recognize this diagram. Um, you know, the majority of theolo theology throughout the world and most, a lot of the regions is that they believe that God exists in a Trinity and that type of thing. So this is a symbol of the Trinity. Okay. Father, son, and, 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 and Holy spirit. But you know, I, this came to me the other day. I said, why is it 
that all of us, all of us, all every living, breathing human being struggles. We get one thing right, then something else goes wrong, this goes wrong. But yet we never reach the full, totally at peace, totally in control, totally not, not, we don't control things and we get them the way we think we want them. And even what we want is not what we want. Because after you get it, you know, you know, I remember the only thing I ever wanted was a house with a garage. I got the house with a garage. Well, that's, I don't know. It's okay. You know, then I wanted a house on the beach. Ah, okay, I got it. Okay, that's okay. I wanted millions of dollars in the bank. I got it. Eh, I don't know. It's, but what, what is going on here, right? So this is very important that you get this here, this concept, because it's not about motivation, inspiration, anything else. It's all about understanding who we really are. And if you look at it, everything, and whether you're more comfortable calling it you know, the source or, or, you know, life or the universe, you know, I call it God. I call it the God of the, you know, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I, I, I define it that way, but however you want to call it, I don't think there's anybody on the call that doesn't believe there's some type of divine intelligence, something bigger than us. Right. So divine intelligence is the mind, right. And we have a divine mind and we have an ego mind, but that's the source. And then the divine mind, that again however you want to call it i call it god the divine mind that's the source right and our divine mind the right side of the brain the creative side of that that's really our source it's that left brain that keeps telling you you're not it's your left brain that keeps telling you i don't know what i want it's your or you get something you don't know whether why you even work so hard to get it all that's that left side of the brain that ego brain but the divine mind is the source and soul intelligence is the cause so once we can master the inside out job, that'll be the cause why I want to do this. This is the cause of taking this divine intelligence. Now, what am I going to do with it? Well, I'm going to take some art. I was sent here to develop this body into some kind of purposeful meaning to, to make things good here. And that's the effect. And we get these all mixed up. We put emphasis on our body. We think that if we work out and da, 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 we get a whole life all straightened out, you know, that way. And we take, you know, we, we put on our stuff or whatever. But we think that if the body, or if I just got it attached to a different body, maybe my life would be better, blah, blah, blah. You know, I went through that many years ago in, in, in my marriage. And, um, you know, so, but how do we get these in sync? Well, we have to understand this is totally separate. But it's not because when you connect them all, it equals your true self. But without these balancing and understanding what's going on, and you'll go to a, a course like this or a seminar or a mastermind, you get all charged up, but you, you don't, you're, you're just getting the effect of it. You're not saying, okay, what's the cause? And then how do I tap all this where I can be the really true self that divine intelligence created me to be? And that's the eternal, eternal self. I, I say it all the time on this call. There's nobody on this call yet that spoke against me or, or disagreed. There's a lot of things we disagree on, but nobody has ever disagreed that no one on this call is physically going to live forever. So the true self is not what we're experiencing here, right? So we got to really get that straight. So let's talk about making this leap. It's leap year. Tomorrow's leap year. Um, I'm going to have a big celebration. I'm, uh, I've got some personal things from March that I'm working on. Make the leap of soul intelligence. So I want you to leap. And I really want you to, you know, to leap, you've got to have faith, right? So you've got to become a leader. If you go on my YouTube channel, you'll see a thing that I did when I was a 36-year-old speaker going around the country to the real estate leaders of America. And I did this uh, session called Leader or Laggard. It was all real estate broker owners and, and managers of offices. I had a big reputation for turning offices around, blah, blah, blah. But I did this presentation. It's about 90 minutes called Leader or Laggard, and it applies to anybody. So it's a great concept, right? And if and I don't have time to go into the word laggard, but it's it's falling behind always. How many of you feel that you're falling behind? How many of you feel like your sales are not the way you'd like them to be in 2024? How many of you feel like your relationship could be better, right? So that means you're lagging, you're lagging, you're lagging. Why is that? So you've got to be a leader. You've got to take ownership today. And you've got to say, I am taking ownership today. So you've got to lead. Then you've got to evaluate your life, but be very honest. Socrates said the unexamined life is not worth living. We don't like to do that work. We will do it with our left brain, the ego brain, and criticize yourself. I'm not good enough. Oh, my gosh, I'm getting fat. Oh, my gosh, my belt loop is now on the second one. I don't, blah, 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 blah. You know, we'll, we'll, we'll criticize ourselves, but we won't examine ourselves. You have to evaluate who you really are, the true self. 
you are made to be marvelous and magnificent and uh, just miraculous, right? We have to evaluate then to elevate. Because if you don't understand your true self, you're never going to get there. And then you got to have the right attitude, right? In order to hit that altitude. And to have get any altitude going, it's all attitude. And then it's power and possibility, right? I, 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 if you have a dictionary, I, I'd like you to open it up, you know, physical and take the word impossible and cut, all, cut it out, right? Nothing's impossible. If you have the desire, everything is possible. You know, someone said last week today, they said, Fred, you know, I'm really having a struggle. I don't know what I want. I, I got to find out what I really want. I said, look, let's just change the, the language. Let's change the scenario. Let's really focus on wanting what you have, wanting the struggle, wanting the challenges you've got going, wanting this, wanting that. Because divine intelligence, divine intelligence is calling you to something. We haven't figured it out yet. So tune in with your soul intelligence so it works its way out in your body. So we look at this struggle and we think that's the effect. No, that's the source saying, hey, I don't, you got something better here. And then it, 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 we got to tune in with this and then let it happen here, right? So it's always the attitude and then, the, and then understanding that the power, we have the power. It just depends upon what we focus on. So in March, we're going to focus on these things, mastering the self, mastering the business of life first, and then master the business. I'm going to bring in artificial intelligence, make sure that we're experts in artificial intelligence by the end of March, and mainly soul intelligence. So the month of March is the month of M&Ms. Life is full of free M&Ms for everyone. You, 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 I'm just giving that to you. From now on, they're free for you, Okay. Uh, and what are the M&Ms? To be marvelous, moment by moment. I've already been practicing this. Just, um, you know, I was riding in the car and, and some stuff was going down and this and that. And 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 I started to go, you know, the left brain. So I said, wait a minute, I'm marvelous. Well, not necessarily, I don't feel like it really right now, but this moment I can be. So I said, I'm only going to do it my moment by moment. And I'll tell you folks, just for the last four or five days since I've been practicing this, oh my gosh, the peace, the power, the... I just got a call the other day. I don't like talking about deals until they're really there, but I'm talking about, you know, going back to a deal that didn't work through and a half years ago. It was a hundred million dollar commercial deal, 54 acres of Palm Beach County. My phone rang. I said, Hey, can you help me with this? Now, will it happen? I don't know. And it's okay if it doesn't, but it's, you know, cause divine intelligence is calling me to something, calling you. And we're all different. We're all alone in that. Your message. It is all about the message, not the messenger. Right. Once you can get that thing, I don't have my life message right yet. So and and we all need to work on that. Be marvelous moment by moment. So that's the first focus in, in month. That's the first M's. And then you got to make the right movements. You know, on your calendar, don't overcommit to things that don't serve you. Time is your greatest commodity. So make the right movements and then make it all minutes miraculous. Folks, I can't tell you to straighten out your stuff, you know, in one week. But I'll tell you what, I can show you how to have a perfect minute. Life by the inch is a cinch, by the yard it's hard. So right now, my minute right now is miraculous. It's been miraculous since three o'clock this morning. We're working on this. It's every minute. So March, I want you to think, well, I, I'm not living the month of March. I'm not living week one, two, three, or four. I'm living minute by minute this month. So if you really want to get marvelous and miraculous and get out of mediocrity, live one minute at a time in, in the month of March. Commit to it. Commit to it. And then every minute you go, I'm going to, the, the other day when I had that thought, I said, you know what? I'm going to create a magical, memorable moment right now. That's what I need. So I looked up, I looked at the sky, I looked at the clouds, I said, man, that's magical. You know, wow. One magical minute at a time. That's all I can do in order to defeat my miserable moments of mediocrity. And the ego loves you to be miserable because you bask in misery. We bask in misery. That's what the ego loves. So the month of M&Ms, break free and unlock the change of mediocrity. First of all, you got to you you got to make yourself mesmerized. You've got to transform your mindset. The other day when I just said, wait a minute, and, and Tony Robbins calls it massive action. What well, massive action is looking in the sky and said, I want to be a part of that. I want to be a part of the the vast, the bigger picture than my little old bullshit I'm, I'm dealing with right now, my belief system. No, it's bigger than me. So mesmerize yourself. Mesmerize yourself. Then mobilize. Take action. 
Molly action, I did. I just turned my head and I started thinking of different. I said, wait a minute. That's the only action I needed to take. Or that minute became marvelous and then maximized. I elevate my standards. Is that you, you've got to keep elevating your standards. Now, do you have to do it perfectly all week long? No. But if you get 20% of some perfection in there, you're going to have a beautiful week. We don't need it. So the month of M&Ms, the M&Ms that hold us back, our messes, right, that we've created. Who created your mess for you? You may say, oh, it's my husband. Oh, it's my wife. Oh, it's my kids. Oh, it's the market. Oh, it's EXP. Oh, it's Coldwell Banker. Some of you won't hear from other companies. Oh, it's the mess I'm in is something outside me. And I'm going to make a change. You know, we've had some people recently, there's, you know, we have four or five people competitive as EXP and some people have been making some changes to a newer concept and blah, blah, blah. And right away, they think, well, it's going to be a miracle. Well, lo and behold, I guarantee you, one year from today, looking back, there's nothing different they will have to do there versus where they are. So we always look to change something on the outside to fix our messes, our mishaps, or our misunderstandings. Um I can't tell you how many people when they're exit, exiting one company, because I coach people outside of EXP Realty, when they're leaving one company or leaving a marriage or leaving this, most of it was based on misunderstandings. And the worst of all is our moaning. Oh my gosh. How many of you admit that you're a moaner, right? How easy is it to moan? <laughs> you, you moan this, you moan that. We moan, we're always moaning. We got, I, I want that to be a focus in March. As soon as I, and I and I laugh at myself. I mean, I'm just glad there's no cameras in my house, you know, especially in my bathroom. I get in the mirror and I look and I'm laughing at myself and I'm talking to myself. And and and, and when I catch myself moaning, I just chuckle. I go, you still don't get it, do you? You got every riches inside you. You're you're, you're eternal, blah blah blah. And I start laughing, and it all goes away, and then things become miraculous. So, the month of March. M&Ms. Here's some more M&Ms for you. Miracles. I want you to keep thinking of the word miracles. I'm a miracle. Recognize we're going to get into scroll number four in a minute, because remember, this all started in November with the greatest salesman in the world, Bob Mandino. My job is to sell you on you. My job is to sell you on your soul, to sell you on your soul intelligence, to so sell you on the spiritual side of success, because no other side of success really is lasting. So I really want you to focus on the miracles, recognize the wonders in your life. You've got thousands of them, magical moments, cultivate joy and surprise. You may say, how do I do that? I mean, you know, I had a situation the other day where, yeah, it was a little bit irritating, you know, when my partner did, did a certain thing. And, and I said, wait a minute, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn it on to, to a laughter thing. And you have to do that, right? Because we're so programmed, things have to be a certain way, but that certain way is not the way everybody else is, right? So cultivate joy and surprise in everything. Do it in your, every part of your life right? Memories. Build a legacy of positivity. That's the main legacy you want to leave behind because when you have positivity, all things work together for the good. Monumental health. You know what, folks? It's hard to have options when you're not healthy. Uh, I forget what the quote is. A man that uh, is without health only has one option. A man that has health has thousands of options or something like that. So monumental health. Foster your well-being, your well-being on, you know, and one of the things we need to do mentally right now, we've got to stop doing what we do when we look at social media. You, we, it's, we're living in a day and age, if we don't, if we're not cognizant of the fact, we're looking at other people, we're romanticizing their life, because you only see the good. They have the same thing you have going on. We're all equal. We're all in this together. Monumental health, mental health, physical health, every way you can do it. Foster well-being in all dimensions. Now, the, again, some more M&Ms for you. You want to manifest. Bring your desires to life. Your desires to be peaceful, purposeful, powerful. Your, your desire, you know what your desires are. I'm not talking about this. You know, a lot of people get so hung up, you got to find your why. Folks, I get it. You know, I understand that. But it's a minute by minute thing, man. I've got a big why, you know, that I set for many, many years from now, 12 years, 13 years from now. But but it's OK, though. You What you got to do is what do I desire right now? There's one thing and you and I've called a lot of you in it over the time that we've been spending together the last three or four years. I'll say, what do you want? No one ever puts in the chat peace, love, 
understanding, <laughs> acceptance. You know, but yet that's really deep down what we want, right? Except myself, be in love with myself, be in, be in love with the process, be in love with the process. And things don't have to go your way. Stop controlling the universe. Stop controlling the universe. You've got to definitely come here, evaluate that it's it's not up to us, you know, where it was evaluating. I won't bounce around too much. Let me go back. Um, is is that let's not, you know, quit being the, the you know, God of the universe. It doesn't have to be all your way. So then we inspire yourself and others. You've got to inspire yourself. And the way you inspire yourself is by showing up on this call, showing up on other calls. I inspired myself with AI. I said, I, I, I don't know how I'm going to do it this week, but I really want to tap into this person. And, and, uh, and I did. I said, you know, I've got to do it because I've really got, not inspire, but really, I really want to embrace and understand AI. I, I really do really well with it, but oh my gosh, I, I made me realize I don't know anything. Inspire yourself and others all the time. Master, become the architect of your own reality. Remember, you're the architect. Now, some of you, you know, oh, yeah, that's the problem, Fred. I, I can't do it. Uh, you know, and you're moaning. Stop moaning. <laughs> Take that as a badge. You're the architect. God said to you or life said to you or the universe says, you're the architect. You're the architect. What a beautiful role. Right. People go to many years of school to become a re, uh, architect. You are the architect of your own reality. Now, here's your manifesto for March. Let every moment be a step away from mediocrity. Every time you I, and I mean it, I've been playing with this. It's been so fun. I, I was walking the other day. I was up to like 18,000 steps. And I go, oh, my God. I said, I'm going to take one more, one more. Um, and I said, I'm going to walk away from mediocrity. And I keep looking over my shoulder and my back. Right. And, and uh, so the month of March, your main focus, I want you to be, I'm going to walk away from mediocrity. As soon as you have that negative thought from the left side of your brain, that ego brain, not divine intelligence, but your ego intelligence saying you're not good enough, whatever it is to feel, I'm going to walk away from that. Take one step, even if you have to move one foot or another. Embrace the miracles that make you nature's greatest masterpiece. Make March the month of marvelous moments and miracles, okay? So now we have Og Mandino. Uh, in this slide, the handout, you know, for those of you that are um, used to this, we're going to put the uh, handout into the um, um, 920society.org. Annabelle, go ahead and put that in there. Um, we, we put this handout in there so you have all these links. Uh, I'm putting all 10 scrolls from now on because I, some people came back last week and said, oh, what were the other scrolls because they were new to the meeting? But scroll four is this. I am nature's greatest miracle. I am nature's greatest miracle. Since the beginning of time, never has there been another with my mind, my heart, my eyes, my ears, my hand, my hair, my mouth. None that came before, none that live today, and none that will come tomorrow can walk and talk and move and think exactly like me. All men are my brothers, yet I am different from each. I am a unique creature. I am nature's greatest miracle. Although I, nature's, nature's, this is that, that triangle I showed you, the true self. Although I am of the animal kingdom, that's the body, right? We come and go. Animal rewards alone will not satisfy me. Within me burns a flame, which has been passed, soul intelligence. This, the flame is soul intelligence. With me, some I call it the kingdom within. Uh, within me burns a flame, which has been passed from generations uncounted. And its heat is a constant irritation to my spirit to become better than I am. And I will, I will fan this flame of dissatisfaction and proclaim my uniqueness to the world. Now I've said this before, whether you're religiously oriented or not, or spiritually oriented, it doesn't matter. It makes a life great mantra. There's a book called the book of Thomas that never made it into the official, what, what a lot of religions call the Bible. It's called the book of Thomas, the gospel of Thomas in there. Jesus is quoted as saying, bring forth what is within you or what is within you will dis eventually destroy you. And he was talking about the kingdom, what God, what you, the universe, what the source, or whatever you want to call it, put with inside you. This is what he's talking about here, that inside me burns something, it's an irritation to become better than I am. And I will. So what do we do, though, when we get that? Oh, I can't do that. So we overeat. We'll drink. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll have an extramarital affair. We'll do this. We'll do that. We'll spend more money. We'll go shopping. We're running from ourselves. The ego loves to do that. 
None can duplicate my brush strokes. None can duplicate my chisel marks. None can duplicate my handwriting. None can produce my child. And in truth, none has the ability to sell exactly as I. I love when new people say to me, well, what am I going to say? You're going to say whoever you are. <laughs> Henceforth, I will capitalize on this difference, for it is an asset to be promoted to the fullest. And folks, I used to teach kids in Sunday school when I was 19, 20 years old. And I used to tell them, you're all a piece of fruit. And there's some people that are allergic to grapes, but don't take it personally. There's some people that are allergic to strawberries. Don't take it personally. My partner is allergic to kiwi. Don't ever get her near kiwi. She'll break out. Why? Well, it's just her nature. So don't worry if you're a new salesperson. What do I say? What do I do? Not? Just go present yourself to the world and find out. And you're going to have some people that are allergic to you. So just leave. Go to someone that really enjoys your deliciousness. I am nature's greatest miracle. Vain attempts to imitate others no longer will I make. Instead, I will place my uniqueness on display in the marketplace. I will proclaim it. Yea, I will sell it. I will begin now to accent my differences, hide my similarities. So too will I apply this principle to the goods I sell. Salesmen and goods, different from all others and proud of the differences. Ladies, I'm sorry, this was written back in the 30s, 1930s. Uh, different from all others and proud of the differences. Now with AI, oh my gosh, you can type in there exactly what your differences are. Say, help me with the script. It'll do it. I am a unique creature of nature. I am rare, and there is value in all rarity. See, here's what we don't focus on. Then go back to that triangle in your head for a moment that I showed you. And I'm going to come back to that triangle again. You're rare. That's the true self. Not the one you made, not the one your parents made, not the one your programming made, but the one that you came from love. That one that came from love, and it's going back to love. That's the one we're talking about, the true self. I am rare. There is value in all rarity. You are rare. You may say, yeah, I really am. I really And then now you're going to go moan on me. Don't moan. <laughs> yes, I am rare, damn it. I am rare. Wow. I, now, you may be a diamond. You have a lot of rarity, but you got a lot of stuff on it. So you just keep chipping away at it. And life will do that for you. Don't worry about it. I am rare. and There is value in all rarity, therefore. I am valuable. I am the end product of thousands of years of evolution, therefore. I am better equipped in both mind and body than all the emperors and wise men who preceded me. But my skills, my mind, my heart, my body will stagnate, rot, and die, lest I put them to good use. What's the saying that you always hear me say? You're either green and you're growing, or if not, you're going to be ripe. And a lot of you are ripe. That means you're rotting. You only have two choices. So stay green, my friend. Stay green. I have unlimited potential. Only a small portion of my brain do I employ. Only a paltry, a paltry amount of muscles do I flex. A hundredfold or more can I increase my accomplishments of yesterday's. And this I will do beginning today. Never more will I be satisfied with yesterday's accomplishments, nor will I indulge any more in self-praise for deeds, which in reality are too small to even acknowledge. I can accomplish far more than I have, and I will. For why should the miracle which produced me end with my birth? Oh, I love that. A lot of us, it just ended with our birth. Why can I not extend that miracle to my deeds today? I am nature's greatest miracle. And you can if you do it by moment by moment. Life by the inch is a cinch. I am not on this earth by chance. I am here for a purpose. And that purpose is to grow into a mountain, not to shrink to a grain of sand. Henceforth, will I apply all my efforts to become the highest mountain of all, and I will stay, I will strain my potential until it cries for mercy. That song, Walking Alone, that I played earlier, right? Uh, so j just keep pushing. You know, the scroll before this one was, I will persist. I will increase my knowledge of mankind. This is where we fall down, folks. We don't study all areas of life, and we need to do this. I will increase my knowledge of mankind, myself, and the goods I sell. Thus, my sales will multiply. I keep telling everybody on the calls what business are you in. You're in the information business. The more you increase your information, the more valuable you become to the marketplace. I will practice and improve the and polish the words I utter to sell my goods. For this is the formulation on which I will build my career. And never will I forget that many have attained great wealth and success with only one sales talk. Delivered with excellence. Also will I seek constantly to improve my manners and graces, for they are the sugar to which 
all are attached. You know, a lot of us are familiar with Paul Saperstein that, you know, I mentored into the business in 2020. He's now a big EXP leader of which I'm, we're all in that group together. Um, you know, he, he, you know, oh, this, oh my gosh, Paul has one simple sales talk. He has one simple sales talk. My, my cousin that I brought into the business three and a half years ago, doing over a hundred deals a year in Gainesville. Now one sales talk, <laughs> one, but it took him a long time, but he kept showing up. He kept beating himself up. He kept persisting that he was going to figure it out. And he did. I am nature's greatest miracle. I will concentrate my energy on the challenge of the moment. My actions will help me forget all else. The problems of my home will be left in my home. I will think not of my family when I am in the marketplace, for this will cloud my thoughts. So, too, will the problems of the marketplace be left in the marketplace, and I will think not of my profession when I am in my home, for this will dampen my love. A great mentor of mine told me when I was a manager and I was running a very, very successful office, and I went in to be a regional manager at a very young age of 29, and I had hundreds of ages, a lot of responsibility, three kids growing up, plus a teenager. And I, and I, we were talking one day, he said, Fred, uh, you know, do you have a mailbox on the way to your house? I'm sure you can find a mailbox. Yeah. He said, I want you to mentally, you don't have to get out and do it. Mentally, I want you to just pause as you go by that mailbox every day. And I want you to put all your business issues in that mailbox before you go home. Then on the way back to the office next morning, stop at the mailbox and pick them back up. Do not take them home. What a wise man. There's no room in the marketplace for my family, nor is there room in my home for the market. Each I will divorce from the other, and thus I will remain wedded to both. Separate, separate must they remain, or my career will die. This is the paradox of the ages. I am nature's greatest miracle. I've been given eyes to see and a mind to think, and I now I know a great secret of life, for I perceive at last that all my problems, discouragement, and heartaches are, in truth, great opportunities in disguise. Folks, if you're having a tough time figuring it out, it's just that you're trying to figure it out with AI, your own artificial intelligence, your programmed intelligence, your EI, your ego intelligence. You're trying to figure it out instead of relaxing and breathing and depending on the source, divine intelligence, because your soul intelligence is saying, hey, there's more. It's screaming to you. It's yelling to you. Relax. There, there's, a, um, uh, there's a song that says, you know, uh, be still, right? And, you know, and there's a, there's a, a scripture verse says, be still and know that I am God. If that doesn't fit with you because you feel too religious, they say, be still and the universe will takes care of everything in the long run. Well, however you want to put it, but be still sometime. But you've got to tap the source. I will no longer be fooled by the, and it's not up to you. That's the great thing about the chart. It's not up to you. You don't have to work to get this done. You just got to get rid of the fear and have faith in the fact that who you really are, your true self. I will no longer be fooled by the garments that they wear, for my eyes are open. I will look beyond the cloth, the cloth, and I will not be deceived. I am nature's greatest miracle. No beast, no plant, no wind, no rain, no rock, no lake had the same beginnings as I, for I was conceived in love and brought forth with a purpose in the past. I have not considered this fact, but it will henceforth shake my God and guide my life. I am nature's greatest miracle. One moment at a time in the month of March, and nature knows not defeat. You know, nature doesn't know any defeat. Eventually, so you're part of nature, the true self. Eventually, she emerges victorious, and so will I. And with each victory, the next struggle becomes less, less difficult. I'm going to testament to that 70 years, every single one of them. Uh, I will win. I will become a great salesman, for I am unique. My job is to sell people on themselves. That's what I'm here for, is to sell people on themselves. I am nature's greatest. Man. I got up at 3 o'clock this morning so I could hopefully convince you and sell you on you. Okay? So that's the scrolls. That's in the that's in here. Uh, when you get this, this is a this is summarizing them for you, so you can print this out and hang it up. It takes heart, spiritual side of success, faith in facts versus fears and illusions. This is that spiritual side of success that has the um, the charts in it. Someone the other day they they called me, they got on my calendar that was on the call at three o'clock, and they said, "Oh, Fred, you know those charts were so beautiful, but I couldn't find them. I didn't emphasize enough. This link takes you to that chart." So see, the soul, the soul intelligence is, is no struggle at all, right? It's, it's all <clears throat> who you already are. It's just figuring that out and knowing it. So read through all these and print these out. Because if you're struggling, you're over here. And if you feel in scarcity, it's over here. Because this is where the strugglers live. 
this is where you're going to stretch and stretch you know, the stretcher lifts, right? So definitely uh, when you get the PDF, make sure that you look for this. That's your homework, okay? Watch this. If you have any doubt you're being miraculous, just look at your physical heart alone. Forget your eyes and everything else. Over 24 hours, assuming an average heart rate of 70 beats per minute, the heart beats 100,800 times. 24 hours. With each beat, the heart pumps about 70 millimeters of blood. Over a day, that equates to approximately 7,056 liters. 1,864 gallons of blood in 24 hours circulates through your body. Blood travels through a vast network of vessels that if stretched out would extend over 60,000 miles. In 60,000 miles of vessels, folks, in 24 hours, blood travels a different distance equivalent to going around the world more than twice. In 24 hours, the heart's work generates roughly one to five watts of power during rest, translating to enough energy to light a small light bulb. That's why you're asleep. In a day, the heart produces enough energy to drive a truck. 20 miles. You see, the heart had electronic vehicles figured out before anybody else figured it out. <laughs> no. So think about that. Over a lifetime, that's equivalent to driving to the moon and back, despite constituting only about 0.5% of the body's total mass. The heart receives approximately 5% of the body's total blood supply with each beat. I percent. Oh, my gosh. See, loving yourself isn't vanity. It's sanity. The greatest success is successful self-acceptance. And the month of March is going to be marvelous, miraculous. You're going to defeat mediocrity. Uh, you know, read my story. I, I you know, I, I am not the master. All together, we're the master. All the masters I've exposed myself, we're the master. Read my work on soul cancer. You know, that what for why we have so much mediocrity, because we accept not feeling good as normal. We accept the bad marriage as just being normal. We 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 accept the fact, well, I'm not as good as sales as being. Well, I just I guess that's the way it is. So read the work I did on soul cancer. It's all because of our acceptance. Right. And not really stepping up and leaping, taking a leap of faith to defeat fear and always living in that love. So going back to this and then let me, and I'm going to stop share so we can chat. This is so critical because so many times we show up, we say, Oh, it's about mindset. And this is what we emphasize. Well, you've got to have all this to understand the true self. And that's the way you could have magical moments because folks, the way I have magical moments and I, I, I have to do it. I don't know, maybe a minimum of a once, twice, three times a day. I have to always say to myself, huh, that's an interesting thought. I wonder how that's going to affect me 50 years from now. I didn't think about that 80 years ago. <laughs> I do that because I want a picture of this whole thing, not just one piece. This is the problem. We, we, we just focus on our body. We let our body tell us that we're not good enough. Damn, it's only a body. Just because that little extra on it, what are you doing? You know, and, and if you're tied in with soul, I say, yeah, you know what? If that body speaks that language, you look at you, look at you, look at, look, look at you. Oh my gosh. Well, if it says, I say, okay, hold on a second. Let me evaluate that. And let me put it in the soul. To, hmm, that's interesting. That didn't bother me 50 years ago. It's not going to bother me 50 years from now, but, you know, but I should do need to pay attention because it's not making me feel really good. What can I do? Right? So once you can get this whole picture all in one, okay, that's when the magic is going to happen. And I'll tell you, be in store for some artificial intelligence. This, um, oops, let me hit my stop share. Uh, have I been sharing this whole time? Guys, have I been sharing the screen? No. No one spoke up. I went through your whole presentation. Annabelle. Annabelle, where are you? I went through your whole presentation. Did you see the PDF at all? Hello? Come on. I, I thought there's something wrong with my screen. <laughs> That's why no. I didn't speak up. Oh my gosh. This is hours upon hours of this beautiful presentation. All right. We're going to give it to you. Uh, matter of fact, let me put it in the chat for those of you who are still here. I am so sorry. Annabelle, how did we let that happen? Oh. We're gosh. so far away. What's that? 
We saw part of it. But that's okay. But you still uh, would need to see this as you're as you're listening because that way it really sinks in more. I really apologize for that. So I'm now going to evaluate that, saying, "Hmm, that's interesting. How did that happen, and why did it happen?" I want to show you where these links were. I want to see you where these links were. Folks, don't show up at a mastermind and tune out and then multitask. You just be into it so you can say, hey, wait a minute. Um, you know, I was on this thing and these people are highly professional with AI. And a number of times things like that happen. It's just typical of Zoom. But that's okay. So when you get the, are you seeing my screen now, everyone? I must have clicked something and it disappeared. Are you seeing my screen? Yes. Yes. I see your screen now. Okay, cool. So anyway, this this is what you're going to get. Annabelle, uh, let me do that right now. Uh, I'm going to put this in the chat as well as we're going to post it on the – I really uh, apologize for that. Um, let's see. Okay, let me get that form. Uh, open it up. Uh, thoughts, uh, you know, without you seeing it, it's kind of um, – not as uh, impactful for you, but that's okay. Uh, any thoughts, comments, input to anybody else? Uh, by the way, I ask people if you're, you know, in the community, that if you're struggling, you're a certain age. And, you know, one of the gals put out there how she's struggling. She's 52 years old and she put a little video of herself out. Uh, so in the community, all those opportunities are available. Um, I really want to sell you guys on yourself. And the only way I can do that is that you really truly understand the power of the mastermind and why I made the community private. Uh, let me put this into, okay, here it is. Um, so anybody speak up, uh, Annabelle, keep an eye on the chat. Let me just see here. Let me get this into Annabelle. I'm just going to put it here. You post it. Why? Uh, so I can focus here. Uh, okay. document. Here we go. Document. Uh, one drive. Uh, here we go. A priorities, Wednesday meeting, Wednesday's meeting, uh, February 28th. Put this in there since, uh, in, and, and plus we'll still post it on the, um, please put that in the chat, Annabelle. Uh, so yeah, it has my calendar link. It has my, my uh, message center in there and all that kind of stuff for you. Okay. So, I really apologize because that those slides and some of them. Did you all get the slide about the triangle? Did you see the triangle? That's the most important. Did you see the triangle? As I was, this is the thing that's really most important is that you understand that it's just not mindset. You know, it's this has got to be everything in sync. This is what we're talking about. So. This is where I got to, you've got to get yourself. I can't get you there. You've got to get here yourself. And that way, every moment in March could be magical. It could be a message. Every, I didn't say that. That's good. Every, every moment could be a message. Every negative thought could be a message if you analyze it and evaluate it. That's why I said, you know, you evaluate to elevate. And you, and, and Socrates said the unexamined life is not worth living. Okay. So, I want you to elevate every thought in the month of March and get this please and print it out and keep it on your desk and, and definitely get in here where, where this lives the homework, because I, in order to get you sold on yourself and to make March really a miraculous month for you and a marvelous month, uh, we've got to defeat this mediocrity. How many of you on a scale of one to 10, let's see how much transparency we have. Take mediocrity on a scale of one to 10. And I'm going to put mine in first on a scale of one to 10. When I take all parts of my life. Okay. If I had to rank myself, which I don't do with people, I did, you know, but just for our conversation's sake, to say, Hey, how mediocre am I on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the worst one. I have no mediocrity. So just the opposite one. I have no mediocrity. Boy, I'm just on the bop, 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 bop. But on the uh, 10 is, oh, my gosh. You know, there's a story of mediocrity. Guy goes to the football game, right, with his friend. And the thing starts getting ready to get done. And everyone's standing up and clapping, clapping. And his friend leaves. And he had paid a lot of money. It was a Super Bowl game. And he paid a lot of money for his friend to tell He left. Well, the guy, he forgot, had such an inferiority complex he had such an inferiority complex. When he got a hold of his friend, he said, you know how much I paid for that ticket? Why'd you leave? He said, the game didn't get started. Everyone just got up and cheered everybody. He said, I'm so sorry. He said, I just thought all those people were, you know, 
laughing at me and and you know i just felt very uncomfortable <laughs> so you know mediocrity you know and inferiority is got to be defeated that's why our sales that's why our finances that's why our relationships is all inferiority and mediocrity so we got to defeat it so anybody else uh speak up. you have a six a uh, rick wow yeah th th that's exactly where i am a six um seven ted okay good good seven okay good uh anybody else come on now your true self your true self folks you're a 10 right that's the point of the scroll number four you're a miracle see your true self is a 10 your ego intelligence your body your program has told you you're a five six seven and so the reason i said i'm a six is because i still have a lot of work to do to get all these in sync to get all these in sync so you know, that's the month of March. Let's defeat mediocrity. So anybody else, anybody speak up, say, say a word, say, you know, a word of encouragement. Anybody? Yakamo! He's always Good got Good morning, Super. Good morning, Super Fred. What's going on? Well, what's going on? I didn't share my screen with these lovely folks, you know, <laughs> that I had worked four hours on. And, 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 and yeah, I, I, I know, I know. But you don't need to cry. You don't need to cry. We are all here. I don't need to. No, I don't need to. I don't need to moan, right? I don't need to moan. No, you don't. You don't moan. No. Not that, Fred, I want to share with with you something really important because you share with uh, with everybody something beautiful about thought, okay? And uh, I think so. You know, during the last my, you know, uh, in in December in Italy, uh, you know, I used for many years like you, like every uh, goal achiever, uh, uh you know. Uh, a book, uh, um, a calendar uh, with me every time to sign each uh, step of my process, of my, of my business, of my appointment, everything. But never think about to put in this kind of book uh, a thought. Every time I have now a thought in my mind, normally, you know, we have a lot of thought with, I don't possible put every, but when I sit down, when I feel super happy, when I see diversity in my emotion, I put in this one with the time and the emotion I feel at that time. Why and um, uh, for which reason I I receive this kind of emotion? And in this way, I started to analyze myself to understand something give me uh, some kind of um, thought mind, give me energy, some other kind of thing way give me uh, a frustration give me uh anxious give me you know a lot of the the you know a lot of emotion part to the our life but we don't want and you know for this reason you know really beautiful what you share because i think so everybody we need to have with us something to recording to if is a phone is a, a whatever is easy for you guys to remind which thought you have at that moment and which uh, motivation uh, create this thought. Yeah. Big diversity, you will see, you know, you started to analyze yourself and to see this kind of thing. What do you think, friend? Well, I did not think what I do, and I'm so glad you brought that up. See, folks, that's the mastermind. One, I didn't put that in there when I said evaluate and, 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 uh, so, and then also envision too, but what I have, I have an iPhone. So notes, I don't know if you know how to master it, by the way, whether you have an Android or, or a iPhone, I want you to go to YouTube and, and just look up your model of your phone and say, what are all the benefits? What are all the features of it? For instance, iPhone, the notes are so powerful. I, I, I won't take time to share mine, but under notes, I do exactly the same thing. And it, it, whether it's positive folks uh, or, or negative, it's called journaling in some aspects, but what you're talking about, every thought that's negative, and then you, that's, that's a great evaluation, right? I do the same thing. I have a app called day one. Uh, that's mm -hmm. a journaling app that I've used for about five years now. Uh, it's called day one. If you want to journal on your phone, you could put videos, you could put pictures, you could put everything. I wake up a lot of times very first thing in the morning and I'll hit record on my day one journal app. And I, I, 
uh, next week, maybe I'll share it because it's part of artificial intelligence. It's artificial, right? But it's beautiful because it helps my soul intelligence. And I'll just record how I feel. I record the thoughts that were going through my head. And I, I go back now two, three years, four years. I go, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm still struggling with that one. So that's great input, great input. But yeah. I would I would get a journaling app as well. Day one, I highly recommend. I just put it in the chat, day one. Uh, you'll find it in either the uh, iStore or the um, if you have Android, you'll find it there. So that, that great info, my friend. I, wanna, I said we pull that last one is, uh, is uh, uh, you know because this is a mastermind and you get something really good every time with the people. I think so another app really powerful to share is Bullet uh, uh, Journal. You know, and uh, is is really you know I use for many years. And, you know, this focalizes, you know, in the ma three most important part of your day with the gratitude. And you know better than me, gratitude is the way how you need to start in your day to have the, the power and energy to support all the uh, different situations, the different aspects coming in your day. Right. I think so this other app is important to them. And I will put in the chat if uh, you give me the... the yeah, put it in the chat. Okay? Put it in the chat. That'd be great. Okay. Um, um, yeah, and by the way, folks, you really want to get tuned in. Annabelle, put the um, 920 Society Facebook community link in there. If you're not a member of that, if you are a member, go back, revisit, post a little video of yourself, tell people where you sell, tell people what you do. Uh, I want to get interaction going in there. And then if you have a certain struggle or a certain concept, you know, I have a number, I have about four or five, and I keep encouraging them to do it. People between 50 years old and Ted, how old are you? 62. And I have people between 50 and I think Ted is my oldest now, 62. 62. You know, that says, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm figuring some things out. I'm struggling a little bit. And da, 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 da. Please get in the community and see who's of like mind and say, hey, let's connect. Now, I don't want you to sit around and groan and moan together. And, and commiserate in your misery. I want you to encourage each other to study that spiritual side of success and study the the um, beautiful thing that Annabelle just put on that I didn't share with you while I was presenting. <laughs> um, that, you know, so get in that community. That mastermind, I'm telling you where it's going. It's going to where it used to be years ago when it first got developed from Napoleon Hill, where I'm going to get people in there that can support you every which way, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially. Um, AI, I'm going to get a lot of great AI people in there. Um, so definitely get into that community because that's why I did this. I'm dedicating my entire life to this thing, the 920 Society, because there is such a lack there's such a lack of all togetherness where it covers business, spiritual, physical, emotional, and they financially all in one place. Um, so that's what the 920 Society is all about. So it's pretty big and you all are the founding members. So please get in there and, and help build it up and encourage others. And, uh, and I'll tell you, it, it will pay off. It will pay off for, for you. Okay. So if any of you, uh, I'm going to stop the recording, Joe. Okay, Joe, are you there? Joe, can you stop the recording? Yeah. Uh, if any of you are on, 